Hi, I'm Mark Champion, one of the team behind SQL Monitor, and I want to talk to you today about alerting on your servers. So you set up a monitoring tool, and hopefully it's SQL Monitor from Redgate. You've turned on the alerting, and now you're getting all kinds of noise and alerts you don't want, so you've turned the alerts off. That's not the way to go about it. What you need to do when you set up monitoring, and when you turn on alerting, and you should turn on alerting, is to tune the alerts. You need to go through the alerts and set up appropriate thresholds. Turn some off, turn some on, and configure them for your system, because your system is not the same as the guys down the road. Once you've done that, you then get the kind of proactive alerting you want. You then get signal and not noise. And that's the key. You want lots of signal and very little noise. And then you've got monitoring and alerting that helps you. I'm going to use SQL Monitor to show you how to tune the alerts so they work better for your system. When you first open up SQL Monitor, you see the global overview screen. It shows the most important alerts for each instance. But we can drill down and see the current alerts for the instance. To configure the alerts, we just click here. And now we can configure the alerts for all the monitored instances. Or set them by group, cluster, instance, or even database level. First, I'm going to set up my alerts for the, all of the servers. Now I've got my list, and you'll notice that most of the alerts are enabled, except for physical memory and processor under utilization. First thing you do is go through the alerts and make a decision whether you want this alert or not. So decide yes or no. So let's see. Um, backup overdue. Uh, yes, I want that. Blocking process. Yes, I want that. Uh, deadlock trace flag disabled. Yes, I want it, but I haven't got an email set for it. Uh, I don't want one, but you can if you want. Fragmented indexes. No, I don't want that. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, analysis service status. No, I don't want that. Full text search. No, I don't want that. Reporting service status. No, I don't want that either. I could keep going, but the ones I've got selected, I then go back up and click on Configure Alerts. And then select Don't raise alerts for these four items, and apply the changes. Now you see that the alerts have gone away. They are no longer enabled. And that's step one. Step two on tuning your alerts is going into each alert and looking at what the thresholds are. This is my backup overdue alert. It's enabled, and you see we have a description of exactly what the alert is and where it comes from, so you know why it is doing what it's doing. Currently, we have a single medium alert set up for this backup overdue. I think it's appropriate, but I want to know sooner than seven days. So I want to change this to two days. You also see this advanced slider here. It allows me to set multiple alerts for the same issue. So I could, for example, raise an additional high alert if my backup was overdue for, say, I don't know, seven days. But I'm not going to do that right now. While we're here, I want to talk to you about notification. At the moment, this alert is sent to the default email address. But if you want to send this alert to a different address, or even multiple addresses, you can do that here. As I said before, these alerts are inherited by everything below. So alerts set up at the cluster level are inherited by the databases below. So for example, I want to set up an alert on my production server, but not on my development server. I can do that. I don't actually want to set up a backup overdue on my dev server. Um, to change this, I click on the development group over here, click backup overdue, configure alerts, and then don't raise alerts for backup overdue on this level. And that's it. You need to go through these steps for each and every alert on your system, so you're receiving the information you need that's unique for your situation. If you're not doing this, you start to get lots of noise, so then you switch them off or start ignoring them. Either way, that's not good. You want these alerts to work for you, not against you. And hopefully this video has shown you how to do it. Thanks for watching, and make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos from Redgate Software.